Hey there everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to unban your Xbox 360 from Xbox Live. Before I get underway, there are a couple of things I want to mention. First off, assuming that I've reached about a thousand subscribers by the time this gets uploaded, I'd like to thank everyone that has watched my videos or subscribed to me. Wouldn't be possible without you. Second, I'd like to apologize for the truly abysmal state of my desktop. Let's get going. Here we've got a folder called Unbanning Tutorial. This process is really very simple, there's really nothing to it. So you're going to need a bit, of, a bit of information. The first being your current CPU key, that is the CPU key of the console which you want to unban. To get that is very simple as well. You just boot your console by pressing the eject button. That will bring you to the Excel application, like this. Now once you see Excel, a section of few sets will flash by pretty quickly on the screen. So be prepared to take a picture of them. These are the fuse sets in question. If you note, take note here, we have fuse set number 3, number 4, number 5, and number 6. These fuse sets contain your CPU key. I've obviously removed the CPU key here for security purposes, but the method to get your key is very simple. Take fuse set number 3 and take fuse set number 5. Add number 5 onto the end of number 3. Now you have your original CPU key. For the sake of simplicity, I've taken note of my original key right here. So what we need to do now is create a dump of our current NAND. To do that, you need an application known as Flash360, which you can get from Xbins. I'll provide all the required links in the description. So once you've got Flash360, just extract the archive, open up the folder, and you'll have two files in one folder. So you take flash360.xex and media the folder and copy both of those to your USB flash drive. You then open up XEX menu, insert the flash drive into your 360 and use it to run flash360.xex. And once you've got flash360 running, you can see here an image of the interface, you'll have three options. Button A to write update flash, which we will be doing later. Button B to write update areas. And button X to back up current NAND to file. Of course, what we want to do here is press button X to back up our current NAND. This is going to ask us if we want to proceed. And of course, we're going to confirm. And that will basically create a backup of our NAND and save it to the USB drive. If you have a look here, I have a file called flashdmp.bin. This is my flash dump, which was made on the 360 using Flash 360. I then transferred it from my drive to this folder. So what we need to do next is apply our new key vault to the current dump. To do that, we need an application called 360 Flash Tool. Once again, please see the description for links. So let's run this application. The first thing we need to do is have a look up here where it says keys. Click keys and we'll notice we have two active sections here. One says CPU, one says 1BL. We need to have a look at our CPU section. Notice it's made up of zeros. So let's add in our current CPU key now. I'll just copy my CPU key from here. And then I will paste it into the application. Make sure that only 1BL and CPU are checked. Everything else needs to be unchecked. Click OK and the application will restart. Next click Open File and you'll notice here we've got flashdump.bin of course. Click that and open it. Now we can see our current NAND dump and our current key vault. What we want to do next is to import our new key vault. But there is something significant we need to take into account here. If you have a look here we have our DVD key and our DVD-O signature. Now you see, when we import the new key vault, it is going to overwrite the DVD information, which is a bad thing. It would mean that our current DVD drive would no longer work with the console because the information is different. To solve this problem, we're going to take note of our current DVD information. So let's just make a new text file here and we'll name it DVD info. We'll copy our current DVD key and paste it in here. 
and we shall copy our current O signature and also paste that in there. Now we can import our new key vault. So click import, check key vault, open file, and we'll see we've got the kb underscore decrypted dot bin. Click that, click open, click OK. And now the application will ask you to save the patched dump. We'll name this edit1.bin. Now let's open up edit1.bin. So you can see, as I said, our DVD information has changed. Now we need to fix this if our current DVD drive is to continue to work. So we'll just click patch, patch key vault. A quick side note here, you can also patch the region. We'll take our DVD key from the original NAND dump, copy that, and paste it into this panel here. Now we'll look at our DVD O signature and we'll try to find our matching signature in this list of O signatures. If you notice here we have an MS28 drive and it's a TS Corp. TS Corp MS28. This is the correct one. Click OK and the application will once again ask you to save the output file. We shall save this as upd flash bin. This is our final output. And now in the folder, we see we have upd flash bin. It is our unbanned NAND dump, which must now be flashed back to your Xbox 360. To do this, you need to run flash 360 once more, but only after copying upd flash bin over to your USB drive. Once Flash 360 is running, you'll once again be presented with your three options. In this case, we want to write UPD Flash in to NAND, so we'll press button A. Next, it will ask you if you want to continue, which of course you do. It will then ask you if you want to write the file while keeping the current key vault or while overwriting the current key vault. In this case, we want to overwrite the current key vault. Finally, it will also present you with an alert that the new key vault which you plan to write does not match the key vault currently on the console. In this case, because we have deliberately replaced the key vault, this message is not a problem. We can just continue. It will begin to flash and should finish within about 30 seconds. Once it has flashed, press the back button twice and your console will power down. Once the console has powered down, give it about 30 seconds and then start it back up again. Your console is now unbanned from Xbox Live. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you found this useful and I'll see you again in my next video.